Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, I thought we would finally make that video I've been promising on positioning and how to position baby for a feeding. So stay tuned to the end of the video to learn all the positions you need to know to get your lactation journey off to a good start. My name is Cassie Reyes. I am a registered nurse, a board certified lactation consultant, and founder of People's Lactation here in Washington, DC. I'm so happy that you have found the video and found the channel. Please subscribe down below to join the community and give us a like and hit the bell if you wanna be notified each week when we post a new video. Today we're gonna to cover four positions for feeding baby at breast or chest. You do not need to master all four of these at the same time. In fact, I usually recommend that you feel comfortable with one position before moving on to learning another. Remember, this is a learning process for you and baby, so neither one of you are going to be experts at all of these right from the get-go. The first position we're gonna talk about is the laid back position. Laid back position is a nice one early on. In fact, this is probably going to be the one that you do during that first hour after baby's born, which we call the golden hour. This is the time when baby is really alert and active after birth and they just kind of know what to do. They're born ready and looking for the nipple. So I'm gonna set this up and show you what a laid back positioning would look like. This is a position that you may see on videos if you look up the term breast crawl. It's where babies are just lying on the parent and use all their initial reflexes to locate the nipple and latch themselves. The first step is for the parent to get comfortable, usually in a laid back position. This is sort of the position you would be in directly after birth, slightly elevated in your bed or later on on a couch at home. You wanna lay back comfortably and just place baby in the middle of your chest and you're gonna notice that baby starts to root around and bop their head. They have a lot of head control when they're laying belly to belly with you. And they're gonna start to bop their head around like this and pick one side or the other usually, let them lead the way. And you can take your hand kind of here on their bum or diaper area and just help support them and lead them a little bit um, towards whichever side that they're, they're aiming for. In a laid back position, it may take a good stretch of time for baby to really locate and latch properly and that's okay. This is very reflex driven for baby. So they're gonna be pushing their legs like this to position themselves well. They're gonna use their hands to feel and smell and they're going to take a good seven to 10 minutes to really explore and find their way to that good latch. So remember while in that initial golden hour, baby may latch beautifully in this position, it is expected that after that first initial hour, your baby's gonna be really sleepy and a lot of people start to worry that the first feeding went so well and then the rest of the feedings for the first 24 hours are really hit or miss and just be assured that that's really normal, that it's a good sign that baby got on for that first feed and if they continue to be really sleepy for that first 24 hours, nothing to worry about. Check in with your postpartum nurse or lactation consultant. The second position that we're going to cover is the cross cradle position. I wanna distinguish between the cradle and the cross cradle real quick because I see a lot of new parents trying to latch baby in a cradle, which is like this. And I usually encourage these parents of newborns to switch to the cross cradle because in this position where baby's head is in the crook of your elbow, it can be really hard um, for baby to get a deep latch because they need a little bit more guidance and a little bit more support of their head and neck. So I'll show you how to set that up. As I discussed on this video on how to achieve a deep latch and deep latch technique, you want to support baby like a C from ear to ear like this and place the palm of your hand right between or the heel of your hand right between the shoulder blades like this and then come into your C hold. 
This C hold allows you to kind of turn baby's head side to side while you're hugging them in close from between the shoulder blades. Since baby is coming across your body like this, their mouth is going to be coming sideways. I'm gonna place baby down for a second. You want to imagine that their mouth is coming across this way. You're gonna make a U shape and then you're gonna come underneath the breast or chest and support kind of where your underwire would be to your bra or if you have larger breasts, you may not want to be way back where your underwire would be, but you wanna be at least a good inch or two behind the areola and you're gonna compress and make this sandwich shape so that baby's mouth can come up and over that shape that you're making for them. Okay, so for a cross cradle hold, and you can do this in the hospital or at home, I recommend having a pillow on your lap. You don't necessarily need to have all the special pillows like the boppy or my breast friend. They can be helpful, but they're definitely not necessary for positioning baby and a regular pillow sometimes can be just as helpful. So you wanna place baby on the pillow um, at a level that lines them up at the same level as the nipple. You always wanna bring baby to you and not bring the nipple to baby. You want to turn baby so their belly is facing you. So belly to belly and all of these positions you're gonna hear me say belly to belly. Babies can't eat with their neck turned to the side if you turn your head to the side and try to swallow, you're going to realize it's very hard to do so. So what we're looking for is baby's hips, shoulders, and head in a straight line like this. We're gonna bring our hands, like the C-hold that we talked about in this video on deep latch technique. You're gonna use that C behind the ears, like this, at the base of the neck. This is kind of your steering wheel. You can turn baby's head side to side, and the heel of your hand falls right between the shoulder blades. So you hug baby close from the shoulder blades and kind of help direction their head a little bit with the steering wheel that you have right at the base of their neck. And you can get your fingers, your index finger and your thumb fall right on a little bone behind the baby's ear or they can come over the ear lobes. It's okay, you're not going to hurt baby's ears. What you do want to avoid is your fingers touching baby's cheeks because their rooting reflex is going to make them turn in the direction towards anything that they feel on their cheek, thinking that it's the nipple and that they are looking to latch. So you may have a hard time directing them towards the nipple if they think a finger on the cheek is the nipple and they're turning away from it. All right, so let's see what the whole setup looks like. You want to come underneath. We're gonna bring baby in. When baby is coming in, you're gonna aim the nipple towards the nose. The chin hits at the bottom edge of the areola and when they open wide, you tip their head with that C hold, you hug them close and tip that head up and over. When you're hugging baby close from the shoulder blades, instead of pushing on the back of their head, they're gonna extend like this and lead with their chin. So you want them to lead with their chin, get their chin nice and low, nipple to nose and open wide, and come up and over. A lot of people, um, when they bring baby close, are kind of pushing on the back of the head like this. Babies have a reflex that if you push on the back of their head, they're gonna push back against you to protect their breathing. So that's why I'm really focusing on the fact that we hug babies close from between the shoulder blades and tip their heads forward from using this C hold motion on the base of their neck. The next position that we're going to cover is the football hold. And the football hold is a great hold for any parents who have had a cesarean delivery and are feeling uncomfortable placing baby across their abdomen. So let me show you how to set that one up. Right now I'm sitting on a couch and this is a great hold for a couch at home. You can also set this up in a hospital bed by sitting your bed up as far as it will go and setting the pillows up the same way I'm gonna show you to do from a seated position on the couch. So what I find best for a football position is to put either a smaller pillow or a normal pillow the long way behind the parent's back. So I'm gonna place this behind my back. And then depending on how thick your pillows are, you may need one or two pillows to bring baby up to the level of the nipple as we discussed in the cross cradle hold. 
So in this case, I have two normal sized pillows piled on top of each other the long way to build the little shelf for baby to lay on. This is a nice position because it takes a lot of the heavy lifting off of the parent's arm and allows the pillows to support a lot of baby's weight while you can focus more on that good C-hold support behind the neck and shoulder blades and focus less on supporting baby from falling down with gravity. All right, so I'm gonna set my baby up. You want to continue to do the C-hold that we talked about earlier. Continue to use the heel of your hand to push between the shoulder blades. Baby's body is mostly resting on the pillows and you do want to turn those hips towards you so we have that belly to belly positioning we talked about earlier. Because baby is coming at kind of an angle, their nose is kind of aimed at this opposite shoulder blade, the way that you support the breast or chest changes. So instead of that U shape underneath like we did for a cross cradle, you're going to make more of a sideways C hold. That way baby's chin can hook way under here on the breast or chest while the nipple points to the nose and you're gonna bring them right up and over like this, supporting between the shoulder blades while the pillows maintain most of the weight of baby's hips and legs. I have a rolled up washcloth here because a lot of times in a position like this or in the cross cradle, the parent's wrist can start to feel really tired and a partner can be really helpful in helping place this kind of behind the parent's wrist to take a little bit of the pressure off and it can be really, really relaxing to have that there. You can also use a rolled up baby blanket for this. The more supported and the better ergonomics that the lactating parent has, the better because of the amount of time you're going to spend breast or chest feeding. You don't want to start to cause any carpal tunnel or discomfort. The first rule is to always have the parent be comfortable and bring baby to them. I see a lot of times that parents are trying to lean forward and distort their bodies in funny ways to try to get baby to latch. That's just not sustainable, so you really want to focus on getting the lactating parent comfortable, getting good pillows set up and good positioning, and bring baby to you. The next position we're going to cover is a side-lying position. This is a position that is better a little bit down the road once parent and baby are a little bit more skilled at latching, but it can be a great one that feels more comfortable for parents to do in the middle of the night or for nap time feed, especially if you're not feeling overly exhausted and you're confident that you're not gonna fall asleep. Um, let me show you how to set that up. For a sideline position, you're gonna set it up like this. You can rest your head on your shoulder or prop it up on your hand. You have baby lying next to you. And again, belly to belly, they're gonna face you. And you can use this hand to help support them and guide them. And they're gonna eat off the bottom side, the one that is closest to the mattress or couch cushion. So you just hug them in close and if you need to, you can use this hand to support them while you shape the breast or chest tissue for them a little bit if needed. Um, but since this is a little bit more advanced of a position, usually by the time you're trying this out, you guys have gotten a good groove down and baby is better at independently latching. So I think we've covered the major positions you would need to know in the beginning to get off to a good start. Like I said, you don't need to know how to do all of these right away. Once you master one position, you can start to practice another. The laid back is good for the first hour of life. Then the cross cradle or football can really give your newborn that good head and neck support that they might need to be able to really open up wide and get a deep latch. And finally, uh, another thing to note is that if you start to get some soreness, it can also be really helpful to know more than one position in case you do start to get a little bit sore or tender. You can position baby in different positions for each feed and that way rotate the spot on the breast or chest that is getting compressed by baby's jaws. So you could do like a cross cradle for one feed and then rotate to 
a football hold for the next and then do the other side and then rotate again and that way those spots that may be getting sore are getting a longer break between use. So that's it. Thank you for stopping by. Remember to subscribe to the channel down below and hit the bell so you're notified each week when I post a new video. Give us a like and I can't wait to see what comments you guys have down below. Let me know if you have questions. Let me know which position was the most comfortable for you and I will see you all next week.